Okay, so. You got a bow. And you got some new arrows. But it's the worst thing ever. Because they've got knocks that are way too big. And you don't want to make the knocks tinier. Because that's a big pain in the ass. Because everybody tells you, oh man, you got to put nail polish on it. But that takes forever. So here's what you do. You make your serving a little bit thicker. Now you do this with regular thread, right? Because otherwise, yarn, way too much. But yarn's a lot easier to see, okay? So here you go. What you do first is first you need to lock this down, all right? Because otherwise it's gonna be a big pain in the ass. Now there's a lot of really fancy things that you can do, but we're gonna keep it simple, all right? So we've just got it kind of just looped over like that. And we're just gonna loop it back over itself. Just cross it on over. And pretend that this is like our spool of thread, right? Like this right here is freaking. Oh my god, move everything on my desk. So this, this, is this. So we're just going to cross it over the end point here. So then it'll be locked down. So that way we don't have to keep hanging on to it. All right. So then we can pull on it, and then we can actually use it. So, here's the thing. If you just wrap it tightly like this, yeah, it'll slip in between all these little threads. So what you do first is you wrap it crosswise. That way, it'll bridge those gaps first. So this will be the quick way across. And yeah, I'm chewing gum. I'm making a YouTube video. So you want to cross those gaps first. And then, when you go back to do it for real, your thread is going to have something to land on when you go back over. And I'm just rotating this thing so because that's easier for me. But if you're doing this for real, you're going to be able to move the spool of thread around. And that's going to be easier for you. Let's see. What I'm doing here with the yarn, this would still be in danger of going in between the uh, yarn that I've got here on this chopstick. Because I did not tie that tightly at all. So this would definitely still go in between it. But it's not going to because it's suspended. And now here's the thing. You're going to because we're not doing any fancy, like, no, you gotta put this underneath, and then you're gonna wrap it around, and then when you come back, you're gonna wrap it, da, 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 da. Yeah. no, we're not gonna do that. So, we're gonna go this way, and then we're gonna go this way, and we're gonna tie it onto this, okay? So you gotta leave a little bit out here. All right? Because we're not very good at this. <laughs> I'm definitely not, and um, and we haven't figured that shit out. So, and this isn't me making fun of you. This is me making fun of me. So let's just get this done. And I didn't cut this off the 
ball here, so it's getting itself all twisted up and it's getting caught on my keyboard tray and whatever. Because I was just like, oh, I don't want to waste my yarn. Oh, no. But yeah. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. And like I said, I don't think it's going to fucking focus, but whatever. You can see that the other stuff is not showing through. I picked really high contrast stuff so that you would definitely see that it is not showing through. Freaking focus. Oh my god. You dumb bitch. It's not showing through. Anyway. So you can do this at a smaller scale with thread. I did this on my bow and it didn't have any serving to begin with. Now the other thing is, on my bow, it was a Flemish string. And so it had another problem, which was that the serving that I was putting on kept wanting to slip. And so that required a different solution. And so you might end up with this problem too. So a Flemish string is a twisted up braided string. Like, I don't know, people call that a braid anyway. Like, I don't, to me a braid is like a kind of woven looking thing. Anyway, Flemish string, you can look it up. I know the person that I'm talking to knows what it is, but if anybody else looks at this video, you can look it up. Um, and the way that I dealt with that was that essentially I took a needle and um, let me grab one of my big needles. Don't worry why I have these. These are for making dolls. And whatever else takes a big needle. Great for demonstration. Anyway. So what I did with that was when I had my serving on there, I was able to take the thread from the serving and punch it through the bowstring itself. And I took the thread from the serving through the bowstring pulled it all the way through and I didn't pull it too hard because I didn't want I didn't want this to start bending over or anything like that. I didn't want the tension to be weird. I just wanted it to go through. And so then once it was through, then I took it just a little bit under and I punched it through there. And I pulled it through. And I did that a few more times. And that basically made a decent enough anchor point that it would stay put with the friction that it had made. And you can do that with a loop like that. And then you can turn it. And then you can do another loop to make it kind of cross over itself, kind of like an intersection, a four-way intersection, you know? Or you can even do that and then kind of push it through, bring it up for just a little bit, like you bring it out, pull the needle out, get the thread all the way out, and then go right back in as close to where you came out as possible. And then you go as far through as you can. And then you take the needle out again, you know, just try to stay as inside the serving as you as you possibly can without tearing up the without tearing up the bowstring, you know. And then when you get to the other end of the serving, 
you anchor it down again. Because otherwise, what's going to happen to the serving that you made? I'm just going to start doing that. And it does. That's what it did on mine. <laughs> so, if you don't have serving thread, like I didn't, then that's what you can do. So, if you got any questions from there, just let me know, man. <laughs>